Alright, so the first thing to do is just run weighted batch preprocessing to calibrate all your subframes. So in this case, we're just going to reset to the default settings and then load in all our files. Okay, and now that we've done that, we should just adjust our settings. So we want to generate some weights and also force their measurement. We want to align to the image with the best amount of stars. So cluster settings should be fine. You can adjust it if you want. Uh, we want to apply image registration. You don't have to generate drizzle data. I won't use it in this, but you can. Don't apply image integration. And then we'll just Make sure everything is calibrated correctly. Make sure everything is set up correctly and then set the correct output uh, directory. Once you've run weighted batch preprocessing to calibrate and align all your subframes, we need to normalize the images to each other. And how we're going to do that is normalize scale gradient. The reason we need to do this is pretty simple. Uh, if you look at the first frame you've taken and the last frame you've taken, there's going to be a pretty noticeable brightness difference if you apply the same screen transfer function to both images. As you can see, the last image is quite a lot dimmer than the first image you've taken. But if you normalize them using normalized scale gradient, the background levels and the star fluxes are going to be equalized uh, using the same screen transfer function. And so it's going to be a lot easier to subtract out stars or the comet later on. So how we're going to run weighted, uh, sorry, normalized scale gradient is pretty simple. Just open the script. Then add all your registered images from weighted batch preprocessing. And then you can set really any of them as your reference because we're not trying to normalize the weights, just the gradient and the background. So I'll set this one as reference. And now we'll just adjust some settings. We don't want to output the weight prefix. I'll set my output directory to be something like NSG. And now I'll just click on any other file and let's look at the photometry start that it's looking at. So as you can see, quite a lot of bright stars are excluded. That's big. That's good because they're more affected by things like clipping and whatever. Uh, so dimmer stars are the way to go if you want to have an accurate PSF. Now all we really need to do is just adjust the gradient graph. So this is what it looks like. You'll notice a slight jump, and that's where the comet is and we want to just smooth that out. And so something like a gradient smoothness of 2.5 should be fine for this image series. You're free to experiment with your own images. Then just click OK. And the last thing is we don't want to run image integration. So we can run the script and wait for it to load.
All right, so once you've normalized all the frames together, it's time to align uh, the comet subframes to create a comet only image. So first we're just going to go to the comet alignment uh, option. And then we can add our files in. All right, and then it's time now to align the comet subframe. So let's first just put our output directory as new folder. And now time to align. So we'll show the first image in our chain of images. zoom in to the comet and click on it and that will just get, tell the process where the comet is in the first subframe and then let's show the comet in the last subframe and that tells you where the comet is in the last subframe and so just by looking at these parameters it looks like the comets move down about 42 pixels and to the left about 30 pixels so we can just run this process all right and now that comet alignment is run we'll just need to image integrate so first what I'll just do is open up the first comet aligned image that will just give us a small preview to work with. And then I'll open up image integration. And we'll put our comment aligned images in there. And then adjust the settings. So we'll do average, no normalization. Then you want Oh, sorry, let's reset this actually. So we'll add the comet alignment stuff back in. And then we'll want winterize sigma clipping and scale to zero offset. So this is what our settings look like. We also don't care about the weights, so we'll just set all weights equal to one. So average, additive with scaling. Then winterize sigma clipping. Oh, sorry, we don't want normalization and scale plus zero offset. So now it's just time to adjust our cutoff settings. So we want our sigma high to be somewhere around one to a half. So I'm gonna put it at 0.75 right away. And that will hopefully cut out a lot of star trails. And then I'll put our sigma low at 2.5 and that will just hopefully cut out some bad black pixel artifacts that we get. So then I'll screen transfer function or reference image. And I'll just open up a small preview, including some bright stars and the comet. And then I'll just set a region of interest. And then we can just run. All right, once image integration has run, we can just look at the result really quickly. And it looks really good. Uh, there's not a lot of trailing right, that's visible. And the background looks really nice. So that's a very good comments only image already. That's great. So now what we'll do is just we'll not integrate around an image a region of interest. And then we'll just apply global and hope it works. So now that we have our comet only image, it's time to remove some of those extraneous star trails in the background so that we can get a good image. So first I'm gonna open pixel math and just create a white image.
Then I'll just use clone stamp to create a good mask over the comic. So I'll just make the radius a little larger and that should work nicely. And so now it looks something like this. We can save the clone stamp and close the white image. Now I'll just open range selection and create a new mask. And we want it to be pretty smooth. Okay, we have our comet mask now. So we can just undo the clone stamp process we did before. And now we'll open automatic background extractor. We only want a function of one, and we don't want to correct the image at all. So let's see what that background looks like. It's nice and linear. Okay, so now we'll open pixel map again and we'll use this expression where A is the AVE background to replace all the star trail noise with just the background. So if you look at this using a 24 bit screen transfer function, it mirrors nicely what we're going to put right here. So I'll use this mask, and I'll just apply it, invert it, and then use the pixel map. That looks. Oh, need to replace the image. Okay, so this gives us a nice background and it removes a lot of the star trail so we get a better subtracted image. Okay, so we can save that. And now it's time to redo our common alignment. Okay, so we'll open common alignment again. And just make sure everything's reset. We'll add the same normalized files that we're using before. We'll set the output directory to be something like comment subtracted. And now we'll just redo the common alignment process where we show common alignment where the comment is. And now in the subtract, we'll use our operand image as our comet subtracted with the background masked out and replaced with ADE. And 
we can leave this as is and you want to disable linear fit and just run the process. Okay, and now that common alignment has finished running, I can just show you what the subtract image, image looks like now. So let's open the first and last subframe. So as you see, the comet has been subtracted really nicely. There is some overall residue right here where I didn't mask it out as well as it could have been masked out, but that will be fine when we add. So as you can see, there is a little bit of an artifact in the core. But if I draw the same preview over both images, you'll see that that artifact moves. and It should be quite simple to remove. So if we line the previews up, you'll see how it should be quite easy to integrate this out. So now on to image integration. First, what you'll want to do is just run an extra star alignment. And so for our reference, we'll just use the first subframe. And that's important. You need to use the same subframe as the first reference in common alignment. And then we'll just add all our subframes in. We don't want drizzle data. You obviously can use drizzle data, but drizzle doesn't really make a difference in comment processing just yet. And then just make a new directory. And then we'll just let that run. And now that image integration, uh, sorry, star alignment has finished, we can move on to image integration. So I'll just open that first aligned image as our reference. And then we'll open image integration. Just add all of the registered comet subtracted files. Again, we don't want normalization and we don't care about the weights. We'll use Windsor Eye Sigma clipping again. And then for low and high, we'll just both use, I think, two is good right now. Then for the preview, we'll want to use something like this. And then we can just let that run and see how it looks. And so image integration has finished, and so see the rejection going on there and the low rejection as well so the rejection looks like it turned out pretty well of course this artifact right here is not caused by the subtraction and instead caused by the masking and so that's that should be fine So now we can just stop using that region of interest and 
Huh. Okay, so now we have our stars only image. You can see where the mask didn't fully cover the entire halo of the image. That's a little bit unfortunate, uh, just because it would have been nice to completely remove all of that halo from the stars only image. But it's fine. It's pretty fine. Because this will just be added back on when we add the comet only and the stars only image. So now that we've done this, it's time to actually create our true comet only image. So what we'll do is I'll open Comet Integration, or Comet Alignment, sorry. I'll add those normalized scale gradient files. Then I'll set the output directory as, uh, let's do star subtracted. And then we'll just do the same thing that we did before, where we just look at where the comment is. And we'll do that for the last image as well. Okay, and then for the operand image, we'll open the stars only. And now the operand is stars aligned to the reference image. It's not common aligned anymore. We want to disable linear fit once again, and the rest is good, so we can just run that. Okay, and now that common alignment has finished. We can just open some example images of what that star subtraction would do. We'll open this, one in the middle, and then the last subframe. So as you can see, didn't do the best job. But if we line up the images, you can see that it did a good enough job that it should be quite easy to integrate these out. So what I'll do now is we'll open image integration. And we'll add those files with the subtracted stars. We don't want normalization again. Put our pixel rejection to one sky sigma clipping. We'll put our sigma low at 2.5 and our sigma high at 2.5 as well. And then for a region of interest, we're mainly interested in this region around the comet. So I'll just put this maybe even smaller as the region of interest and we'll see how that integrates. Okay, and as you can see, uh, we've created a really, really nice image. There's no trails whatsoever in the background. And so I'm actually going to adjust the clipping maybe just a little bit less so that we can have more signal. So I'll open the pixel rejection again, and then maybe I'll up that to 
2.75. Or actually, I'm going to put this at 3 because there's not a lot of... I know, 2.75. This should be fine. And then I'll do the same for sigma high, and then we'll run that as well. Alright, let's see how this one's done. Wonderful, there's still no trails. And if we just use this as a mask, sorry, I'll apply a screen transfer function to that so you can more easily see what's going on. Uh, you can pretty easily see that there's still no trailing. So I think I'll up both sigmas to 3. I'm not sure what's going on there. Alright, so after a lot of um, just experimentation, I found that the sigma low and sigma high limits are both 3.2, which is pretty cool, I guess, because they're both the same. And so that yields a result that looks like this. No trails, but better signal-to-noise ratio. So I can now just close this, close the image as well, and then we'll just disable that region of interest and run it globally. All right, so now we have our comet integration image and our stars only integration image. You can see where the masking really wasn't quite enough, and that's a bit unfortunate, but again, it's honestly not that bad. If you could always just do it again with a larger mask, but when you add, you'll see that it should be fine. So what I'll do is I'll just rename this image to Comet. I'll set our stars only image as the target image because this has much better SNR. Then I'll say I'll add the Comet and I'll subtract the median of the Comet. And so that'll just make sure we're not clipping anything. So as you see when we do that, the comment is added in nicely, and I'll just apply a nuke to screen transfer function. And that didn't unlink it. I'm sorry about that. You'll see that a comment added quite nicely. And so now that you have this image, it can be post processed like any other image. We'll just save that. And we're done. There are a couple of things I would recommend when post-processing this. The first is just to get a good framing when you crop. Make it more dynamic than just a comment. The second thing is really strongly denoise this. The third thing is repair this core right here because it's going to turn pink. And the last and final thing is maybe use some HDR to show some school stuff, but usually that will only show up with a much deeper field of view. So I hope you found this helpful.